introduced me to a, a woman who's a publisher, and I think of her as my agent, but she thinks of herself as my publisher. Uh, and she's, we met, and for, after five minutes, she said to me, you got a great story, we're going to make this a book. And I thought, yeah, right, I know what the publishing business is like. And within one week, we were, uh, we had a contract. It literally was that fast. So let me introduce you to who I think is one of the most marvelous women in the world. Um, if you're an African-American woman, you know her because she's one of those first African-American women who broke through the glass ceiling. Now she's on, I think, her fourth uh, career, uh, Marva Alvin. Marva? Of anything. I have more than one of everything, it seems. So and that includes publishers. So we also have Regina Brooks. Regina, where are you? <laughs> and John Temple, where are you, John? Hi there. I understand that uh, there's lots of authors in the, in the audience today that many of you, off, I hear from you often, what a horrible problem you have with, with your publisher. I got to tell you that my publishers have been absolutely incredible. Um, I thank you for your understanding and teaching me what I didn't know. Um, I really do appreciate it. And if I've been difficult at times, I apologize. And I hope I haven't. Uh, hey, Mark, don't forget Marie Brown. Mark, so, don't forget Marie. Oh, Marie, where are you? Marie Brown? Marie. Now, Marie is very important for one very simple reason. She's the most important person in the room. You know why? <laughs> She's from Philadelphia. <laughs> so, when you read the book, and you're all going to read the book because you know I'm going to call you and ask you what you thought. Um, uh, there are two people in the book that deserve a special note. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, I had an opportunity to do what other people got to do that I never thought I'd ever do in my life which is become a parent. Um, my nephew called and decided that he wanted to move in, and uh, so we helped raise him. Uh, that chapter is called Bringing Up Baby. My baby is over there. Ladies and gentlemen, my nephew, Jeff Sigel. You'll have witnesses now. I am very proud of you. <laughs> And to all my GLF action group and gay youth people, I get to say that the end of the book, and then I dance. Should I give away the end of the book, everybody? No. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yes. We've all read it. No. Okay. The end of the book <laughs> and the book's title talks about. I talk about in the book how I'm at a meeting in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, dealing with the governor of Pennsylvania trying to get him to do marriage equality, which, as Clay mentioned, was a Republican governor who I got, became very friendly with. Uh, and Pennsylvania got marriage equality a year before the Supreme Court ruling by a conservative Republican. And the story for the first time is in the book. That story you're not hearing. <laughs> You'll have to read the book for that. Uh, but. Uh, I'm looking at my calendar and I know that over the next few weeks I have all these appointments. And the last one on the, on the calendar is that I have to be at the White House uh, at the President's request. And at that White House reception, uh, I got to dance with my now husband, Jason Villamez. Jason? Now, if there's anyone in my life I have to thank, aside from my mother, my incredible grandmother, um, and Jeffrey, <laughs> it's Jason. For the last 11 years, he's kept me grounded, uh, and more importantly, he's taught me the rule, which is something I live by today, which is don't allow negativity and bitterness to get in your way. Yeah, Think yeah. positive and see the joy that's all around us. Because 
who else could say, and again I say to my action group, Gay Liberation Front and Gay Youth Brothers in the house tonight, none of us expected 46 years ago that I'd be able to say, hi, I'm Mark Sigel, and I'm a happily married man. Oh. Thank you.